Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements Photography Project, we're going to take this daytime scene over here and convert it to look like a nighttime scene over here on the right-hand side. Using some real basic techniques, nothing tricky about this, but it's pretty fun to do. As you can see, it has a pretty good effect. All right, let's just hide this image. We'll start with the original photograph. Here we go. There's one thing I didn't do in my example. I'm going to do it now though. It's just bothering me a little bit and that's that white spot right in the middle of that door. That just kind of becomes more noticeable when we do the day to night effect on this. First off, before I even do that though, I always make a copy of my background there. I'm just going to grab it up here, make a new layer, put it to the background copy. So I leave the background hidden, protected, and saved. So if I miss things up here, I can always go back to my original right here inside the file, just to have it that I'm in. All right, let's just take care of that little dot, see what that dot is. I'll zoom in on that. And I'll zoom in. Looks like some kind of bolt right in the middle of the door, but for me, it's a bit annoying. So let's just grab our clone stamp tool and I'll grab a spot. Oh, I think right over here someplace is fine hold the alt key down click and then let's just paint that right on top of that bolt and lose the bolt there we go and that's all it needs maybe a couple little touches in here just to smooth things out all right so far so good let's now back out a bit on this that takes care of that that's no longer really a problem let's just fit on screen there we go. All right, so that's taken care of. Now we can get to work. Let's examine our image and see what we have to work with here. Just a few things. First off, there's, of course, you know, this whole light tone. We'll have to adjust our light tone. Also, it's a little bit on the warm side. We want to cool this down a bit, so we'll be using some cooling effect on this. The biggest problem really is the sky up there. Notice we have this white sky in behind these dark leaves. That really should be about the opposite of that. I don't want to do an inverse on this though. That'll look really weird. But I do want to change the white to a black or the light sky to a black and then keep our leaves about as is. So we'll start with that first as our first problem. I'm going to just stretch this out like that. Let's zoom in a little bit here on that sky section so that I can make a quick selection. I'll just use the polygonal lasso tool. There we go. And I'll make a quick selection right along this edge of this rock up here. You don't have to be perfect on this, but as, as always, the better your selection, the better final effect. I'll, I would take more time on doing this selection if this was a professional job for or some professional retouch job, I'd spend a little more time on this, but I'll just do it real fast here for this video. And with this tool, you just click your points and then Photoshop Elements comes in and fills the line in between the points that you click. Just make sure you don't click too quickly or the whole selection will collapse down and you'll have to redo it. So. Just take a, a breath or a moment between each one of your clicks and you should be okay. All right, right hand side now, just about finished. Now come off screen, click out my gray area outside there. That's why I made it a little wide. And you can click up here as well. I'm, I'm gonna click right inside of the ruler, or actually outside of the picture. You can click outside the picture. I'll click up here. You can see there's the line still over there. And then I'll come down to my beginning spot. It's kind of hard to see but when you are right next to your beginning spot, you'll see a little zero pop up next to the icon for this tool. And that means that you've found the start point. Or if you're just off a little bit, just 
double click and it will then collapse that selection down. So there we go. There's our selection. So that's all set to go. Now we have our copy in here. Let me make another copy of this. There we go. So I have another copy. On this one, just click on the layer mask. What happens is that Photoshop Elements uses the selection that you made to create the layer mask. If I hide this layer, you can see we now just have the sky selected up there. So that's our sky area. Now that we have that, we can work on this sky problem that we have. And we'll do that by using the magic wand and select our sky. And then we're going to change the color of that. So let's grab our magic wand. There we go. And make sure that contiguous is not selected. What this means is everything is touching. So if I, if I clicked in here, it would give me all this kind of stuff around here, anything that's actually touching. But I also want to get this stuff up there. I want to get the stuff over here on the left-hand side. So make sure that's not selected. Tolerance about 25 or 30. I'll put it at 30. That's OK. Just click right in the middle here someplace. And you can see now it's selected all of that light area clear across the image, including over here on the left-hand side of the picture. Now I want to expand this just a little bit. Whenever you use the magic wand, it's going to be outside probably what the actual area you want to have on that. So I'm going to go up here to select and modify and expand just by one pixel, just a touch. And that will take it a little bit further into the leaves. We now want to replace this white in here with black or a dark, dark gray, dark, dark blue, whatever you like. But I'm just going to use black for this video. So come down to your colors, click on the little icon right down there to reset these to your standard foreground and background. Grab the paint bucket. That looks pretty good. You can uncheck contiguous again. And I'm just going to be painting in here. Just click into that area. And it fills that whole selection with black. So we've now taken the light part of our image and converted that to black, leaving the leaves in here untouched. Okay, so far so good. We've taken care of the sky part of that. Let's just deselect this now. now. I want to do a little bit of adjustment on the leaves. It's looking a little, a little funky in here. So we're going to bring those down a bit by adding an adjustment layer onto this layer. So layer, new adjustment layer. Let's do a brightness contrast in here. Now I want this only affecting just this one layer. So check that little checkbox right there. Use previous layer to create clipping mask. This just links this adjustment to that layer. Choose OK. Notice how this is indented in this little arrow right there pointing to this layer. So that's now adjusted. Let's now bring our contrast down. I'm going to bring it way down to about 80 or so. And bring the contrast up. And then you can just you know adjust these visually until it's just where you want it. So I just want to bring the values down so you can see kind of some tree detail happening, but not really see what's going on back in there, which is kind of what you have at night. You have, you know, you can see that there's something in there. It's possibly leaves. It's hard to tell exactly what it is. That's the effect we're looking for. Okay, that takes care of the sky. You can now bring our image back in again. Here we go. There's the image. And let's just zoom out now. Hold the Alt key down. We'll zoom out. I'll leave it a little bit larger for a moment here. We may readjust the size as needed. Okay, so there's the sky taken care of. A little bit of light hitting our tree back there. That's just fine. Everything looks good. Okay, now let's just bring the values down on that. We still have kind of a warmth up there. So I'm just going to go back to this layer. Let's do one more adjustment layer on this to bring our our cools in. As I mentioned earlier, we want to have everything on the cool side. So layer, new adjustment layer. Let's do a photo filter this time. Link it again. That should automatically link because it's above that. We'll just make sure that's set. And let's just choose a cooling filter. There we go. And I'll set this about halfway, about 50%. Let's just type that in. 
hit the enter key to set that and that just cools that down so you have kind of a blueness happening in there now it looks more realistic there we go okay now we've compared that to our image it's nice cool the image is looking far too warm we'll fix that as we go so we now have our copy so the sky is on this one up here I'm just going to rename this sky just double click on the name to change that I'll just rename this one door this is our door layer and our sky layer now we have this done we can come in and move the values here on this one more towards our coolness which is what I want but I'm going to make another copy of this first and we'll just save that for a second so just make a new copy right there and I'm going to call this one light streak or just light make it short and we'll just hide that for a moment we'll leave that alone okay back to our door layer let's now adjust our colors so back up to layer adjustment layer hue saturation link this again with that layer keeping everything linked to their layers in here let's bring our saturation down now at night you tend to lose colors you don't see as much on the colors they tend to get lost you have your colors where your light is and no colors where it's dark so I'll do that right here first off let's adjust our hue I'm gonna pull that over a bit it just finds me that it's just kind of a bit more towards the cool side maybe a little bit to the right it looks like just a little bit and you're just kind of darkening the door down a touch in there be cooler let's now bring our saturation down and then bring it way down to about a negative 57 58 in there somewhere so we're just taking out the color we don't need to darken this down because of course it's a nighttime scene let's bring our lightness down we'll bring it way down to about 64 65 in there you know 50 60 I'll put it right at 60 I think that should be a negative 60 of course there we go so that darkens it all down so far so good it kind of has the right feel it's kind of dark we've lost our color in there. there's a little bit of light in the sky back in there so that's all looking correct now I want to bring some light back onto this looking as if a light streak is hitting it and that's what this layer is for right here now I want to be using just a piece of this through the middle in here so we'll do the with a layer mask we'll first make a selection and I'll grab the polygonal lasso tool up here and I'll just click just outside up here someplace and then pull it down kind of over here somewhere and then do a little bit of grass like that and come partly into the door and then back up here making just kind of a kind of an angled kind of a shape like that and let's now make a layer mask with this now I want the part in here showing and this stuff outside hidden so let's click on layer mask and there we go that's exactly what happens so you see it looks like there's light shining now on the door obviously it's too hard edged but it's the right effect like there's a, a bright light hitting this door and where the light is hitting it we have our full color back and our brightness back where it's not hitting it it's dark and that's exactly what we're looking for now to soften this up you can use a Gaussian blur filter on the layer mask so make sure you have that light blue outline if, if, if it's over here just double click over here get the light blue outline go up to filter blur and Gaussian blur now in the Gaussian blur just pull this over a bit and keep on, on pulling until it begins to soften up until you get just the effect that you want you can see right there it's just beginning to soften up now and the softer it is the more it looks like it's just a natural bit of light hitting that part of the door there we go that's that's perfect effect now so in this case it's a 92.7 let's just type that in at 90 so it's a nice clean number hit the enter key and there we go so there's a nice little light streak last thing I want to do is just to 
cool this down just a little bit. It's a bit too warm still. And we can do that again by another adjustment layer on this layer. So we'll go up to Layer, Adjustment Layer. Let's go for our Photo Filter again. Link this with that layer so it doesn't touch anything else. Choose OK. And we'll do that Cooling Filter 80 again. There we go, Cooling Filter. Now on this you're going to adjust the density of the Cooling Filter just a little bit. See there, just a, just a touch of cooling, kind of like that. So it's not too bright. I have it at 16%. looks pretty good. And there we go. So that's taking a daytime image and making it look as if it's in nighttime. Just a few visual effects, vi visual tricks. All right, let's see how we did. Just get this out of the way, put it right there. And I'll bring back up the original image, which is up here someplace. There we go. So there's the original image, and here's our new image at night version. So there you go. That's how to take a daytime image and make it look as if it's a nighttime image. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.